Am I the only one that didn't know how complex the U.S. election system is? It's like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. The layers, the rules, the strategies, it's a lot to take in. Let's break it down together. The U.S. election process is a multi-step journey that starts with primaries and caucuses, moves through national conventions, and culminates in the general election. Each step is crucial and can make or break a candidate's chances. In the red corner, we have Donald Trump, promising economic revival and a return to law and order. His rallies are electrifying, his supporters are fiercely loyal, and his message resonates with many who feel left behind by the current system. And in the blue corner, Kamala Harris, emphasizing unity and social justice. Harris is focusing on bringing people together, addressing systemic inequalities and pushing for progressive reforms. Her campaign is all about inclusivity and change. But wait, there's a Green Party wildcard, Jill Stein, focusing on environmental and social justice. Stein's platform is centered around climate action, healthcare for all, and breaking the two-party system. She's the voice for those who feel neither major party represents their interests. National polls show a tight race between Trump and Harris with Stein potentially playing spoiler. Polls are snapshots of the moment and they can change rapidly. They give us a glimpse into the current mood of the electorate but are far from definitive. But remember, it's not just about the popular vote, it's all about those electoral votes. The Electoral College is the real battleground, and winning it requires a strategic approach. Here's the deal. America's president isn't decided by who gets the most votes overall, but by who wins the most electoral votes. This system can lead to scenarios where a candidate wins the popular vote, but loses the election as we've seen in the past. Each state has a set number of electoral votes based on its population. States with larger populations have more electoral votes, making them key targets for candidates. Win the state, win the votes. It's a winner-takes-all system in most states, meaning the candidate with the most votes in the state gets all its electoral votes. Now, battleground states are the real MVPs here. These are the states that could go either way and often decide the election. Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Florida, North Carolina. These are the states where the magic happens. They're called battlegrounds because they can swing either way, making them key to victory. They're called battlegrounds because they can swing either way, making them key to victory. Candidates pour resources into these states, holding rallies, running ads, and mobilizing volunteers to sway undecided voters. Currently, polls show Harris making surprising gains in states Trump won in 2016, like Pennsylvania. This shift could be a game changer, but it's still early, and anything can happen. Meanwhile, Stein's presence could siphon votes, particularly from Harris, making this race even more unpredictable. Third-party candidates often face an uphill battle, but can still have a significant impact. With both campaigns in a final frenzy, it all comes down to voter turnout. Who can mobilize their base and get people to the polls? Voter turnout is crucial and can make or break a campaign. Who can mobilize their base and sway undecided voters? Campaigns are pulling out all the stops, from phone banking to door-to-door -door canvassing to ensure their supporters show up on election day. So, who's going to win? It's still anyone's game. The dynamics of this election are constantly shifting, and new developments can change the landscape overnight. It's still anyone's game. Stay tuned, folks, because this election is going right down to the wire. The excitement, the tension, the uncertainty. This is what makes elections so captivating. We'll be watching every twist and turn, so keep your eyes peeled and your popcorn ready.